All right, everybody. Give a quick test. Left, right. Beautiful. Cool. We're going to return. We have a quite special start for you. Everything okay? Is his mic not on? Looks good. Yeah? Yeah? Okay. Doing a quick check for the sound, but the live stream should be up, so welcoming everybody back. Uh, I have Stefan up here. He has a pretty cool talk. I just got a little preview of it, so uh, there's some live demo aspects. We'll see if they, uh, they actually run well with his German accent. If not, maybe I'll get called up on stage. Yeah. So come back in, <clears throat> take a seat, and I give you the stage. Thank you. Hello, my name is Stefan Dilli. Um, it's great to be back at DeConf. Uh, last time is three years ago, actually. Um, 2014, I was talking about backend uh, servers written in Vibe D. And um, that was still in uh, Palo Alto at, some, uh, in, uh, at Facebook. So I kind of miss the weather. But um, since I'm from Germany, who am I to complain, right? Um, so yeah, my talk is going to be about Amazon Alexa skills written in D. And what all of that is, I'm going to explain in a bit. Um, I am maybe known to some of you by my nickname Extrawurst on the forums or on Twitter. I am actually working as the head of front-end engineering at a uh, games company in Hamburg. We are creating mobile and browser-based games. But that's not the topic today. Um, the agenda for today is what the fuck is Alexa? And why am I talking about it? And what does it have to do with D, right? What kind of use cases do we have there? And uh, maybe it's an actual business case to use D in, uh, in production. Um, I'm going to be talking about what is, what is a skill and how to write one in D, and what kind of future perspective I see there. So what is Alexa? Alexa is a voice recognition service by Amazon. It's uh, similar to what you know uh, from your iPhones called Siri or Cortana on Microsoft, if that's still a thing, I don't know. And um, Google has something similar, which is called Google Home. And uh, Alexa is kind of a, a fluffy term for the devices and also the service and the whole brain behind that stuff. And um, the device, one of the possible devices looks like that. It's the Echo Dot. It's actually the, the, uh, the device I worked with. And, uh, the alternative, for example, is the Google Home. Um, I don't know if that's actually available already in the US, but in Germany it's not, unfortunately. Um, but to give you a little uh, hint of what I'm talking about here, I prepared this live demo, and now let's cross fingers that everything works. And um, Alexa, what time is it? It's 9.34 AM. Nice. <laughs> That's it. That's what you can do with that. Now, um, there's actually more. This was a pretty dumb example, right? But um, what kind of use cases are there? Why am I so hooked with that uh, technology right now? Um, the most important use cases which I'm actually daily using with that thing is uh, adding stuff to my to-do list and to my shopping list. That sounds very boring and simple, but actually I never was using any uh, apps like Todoist and stuff like that to actually manage my to-do lists. And uh, because it was just too cumbersome always to open the app and use that stuff. And now that I'm in my kitchen and I can just say, put toast on my uh, shopping list, that's actually something I'm doing because it's so easy. And uh, same goes, for example, if I'm cooking, and I have everything messed up, my hands are dirty, I'm not going to pick up my phone and set a timer, right? And I can tell Alexa just to set the timer to 30 minutes to remind me of the oven. And uh, uh, Alexa is basically also a DJ. It's, uh, it allows me to, to, to start radio channels, to, to uh, play specific songs, specific uh, uh, singers. And um, in the evening, when I'm going to bed, I tell her when to wake me up and uh, to start an audiobook to stream and to put me to sleep, basically, and then turn out uh, after 30 minutes or something. And uh, in the morning, I let her read the news to me, which is specific news to stuff that I'm interested in and not just like any uh, news stuff out there. It's, so it's a lot of nerd updates. And um, 
then I'm interested in what's on my calendar, right, for the, for the business day. So it's connected to my Outlook calendar and it gives me everything that's on the, on the schedule for today. And then finally, I let it switch off the lights and uh, I go to, um, or on in the morning. And actually, this is one of the biggest use cases for me with that whole uh, technology. This home automation uh, stuff is not new. That, that was uh, there over the last couple of years already. There's a couple of smart homes. People can control their homes with the uh, iPhone apps and, and whatnot. And uh, this integrates seamlessly. So without having to pull out my phone, I can make her switch the light on in my bedroom and off. <clears throat> so what is a skill? Um, a skill is actually something like I'm going to show you now again. Alexa, tell me a joke. What does a house wear? A dress. <laughs> yeah, I'm usually using the German version of it, so uh, I hope this one was really funny. <laughs> um, a skill is actually something like that. It's, it defines behavior that Alexa is supposed to do. And it's uh, pretty similar to what, uh, what kind of revolution the iPhone introduced with the App Store and the possibility to put uh, custom uh, applications on your phone. So uh, they just call it differently. It's a skill, but it's essentially the same. So you can customize the behavior of Alexa. So how does the, work, uh, how does the flow work? How does this uh, technology work? Uh, the bad news uh, for privacy-interested uh, people, it's all happening in the cloud. So the device, like the Echo Dot, is merely something, it's, it's nothing more than an array of microphones and a pretty cheap speaker and a couple of LEDs, actually. And uh, what it does is it's, uh, it's trying to find the keyword. It's, in this case, Alexa. And once it picks that up, it just starts to stream the, uh, the stuff into the cloud. And uh, the AVS in this uh, schema is actually the brain of everything. Its uh, job is uh, to, to uh, decode what you said and to create a JSON object out of that. And uh, Lambda is an AWS service that lets you run your skills and also the, the, uh, the, the, the built-in skills from Alexa itself. And since Lambda is supporting, for example, JavaScript, um, most of the examples out there are written in JavaScript uh, based on Node.js. So some of those important terms I already mentioned. Um, it's the skill is the app. Alexa is kind of a term for everything. It's like the, the, the voice recognition service. It's the devices. It's everything. Um, but the brain and, and the real uh, unique selling point of the whole thing is the AVS. And this is something that you can also trigger from your own devices. But I come to that later. And Lambda is the platform that uh, is the, the normal one where you put up your skills, your, your uh, scripts. So as I said, the Echo Dot listens for the keyword, it starts streaming, it, uh, the ABS is decoding the stuff into JSON, and your skill gets provided with the JSON object. And uh, you can do whatever with that and return a JSON object, which then uh, gets encoded into a voice stream again by ABS and uh, going to be played by your Echo Dot. And that's, uh, in my opinion, um, since I'm not concerned with, with uh, that privacy parts uh, so much, uh, that's not an issue because uh, that means that I also don't have to buy like, an, like a smartphone each year again. This stupid device that I have at home will not run and not get outdated since the stuff it's doing is, is so easy. The only thing uh, Amazon uh, uh, can update is the cloud, and that's the, the stuff that really needs updates and, and gets uh, developed. So in the example from uh, before where I can put out and, and on my lights, this is all happening from the skills. So the skills can directly access uh, the APIs that, that you want them to access and to control. <clears throat> so how do you write a custom skill? Everything we saw so far was stuff that is built in into Alexa already. So let's have a look at an example I prepared for this uh, presentation. I hope now it works, because that's where my German accent maybe kicks in. Um, Alexa, ask deconf17 what the motto is. The slogan of deconference 2017 in Berlin is bigger, badder, and Berliner. <laughs> Perfect. Um, so 
what I can do is um, I can define a specific uh, trigger term that then uh, makes Alexa recognize that everything that I'm saying is supposed to end up in my custom skill. In this uh, case, the deconf17 is uh, the keyword. And um, how does that work? Um, the, the three mo most important terms to, to recognize here is an intent, which is um, basically like a, like a behavior that the skill implements. In this case, we saw the intent for the motto. So I can define what to happen when someone asks for the motto of the D conference. And uh, utterances um, are example sentences, so that I can kind of teach Alexa what kind of sentences to expect that are going to be asking for that intent. Um, I'm going to show you examples for that later. And slots is something like a function parameter, actually. So in, in the motto example, that's not going to be necessary. But um, if you want to ask the, the skill, for example, for information about uh, some of our speakers, that's going to be obviously a parameter of an intent, right? So let's have a look at the schema definition of those intents. Uh, in the deconf, uh, in the deconf uh, skill, this is actually what's implemented right now. A couple of them more, but I uh, reduced it to make it fit on the screen. Um, the intent motto is what you saw already. And then we have another intent that lets me ask for the speaker biography. And this has a slot for the parameter that I just mentioned. And then we are also using a built-in intent, which is the Amazon Yes intent. Because what you can also do with Alexa is uh, implement conversations. So Alexa can ask you questions again after you triggered it. And that's what we are going to see in, uh, in, the, in, the, in a bit. These are the utterances, actually, right now in that skill. So these are the kinds of ways how you can formulate that sentence. Um, you can ask for what is the motto or what the motto is. And uh, this is... Uh, this is quite, quite an interesting uh, uh, definition for those uh, sentences, because you can always trigger an in, um, uh, a skill by saying, Alexa, ask decom 17 something. Or you can also say, Alexa, do something with decom 17 So you basically have to come up with examples, example sentences that work for, for both uh, ways. And in the lower part, you can also see that you have to uh, mark up where to expect the parameter in the sentence. But the, the cool thing about that is it's kind of a learning system in the background. So you, you're not uh, uh, going to be covering only those sentences. It's basically just m some examples that are going to work. But right now, Alexa doesn't work without an app that you need to have additionally. And the app is basically there to set it up, because for some reason you don't want to uh, spell out the password to your Wi-Fi, for example. And, um, Account linking, which is an important aspect right now, if you want to link it up to your uh, Outlook account or to all kinds of other services, that's also where you need the app and set up those accounts. And um, to find the skills that I'm all talking about all the time, that's also something you need the app for, because also that is not something that you want Alexa to read to you. So you have this app where you can scroll through the list of uh, skills. And what you see here is the development skills I'm currently working on. Uh, there's the DCOM 2017 skill, um, and there's an Enigma control skill, which basically lets me control my television with Alexa. So I can say, turn it on, switch to that channel, and uh, start recording, and that kind of stuff, so that I can finally lie in bed and do nothing but watching again. <clears throat> but where does that all leave the D language, right? Um, there's two ways to host uh, these, these logics, the, the skills. Uh, the most intuitive one is AWS Lambda, which I'm talking about all the time. But there's also a second option, which is that you can host your skill wherever you want to yourself, because it's all ba web service based. So you can have your own server. You can actually run it at home. You can also run it in EC2 instances in AWS. That actually doesn't matter at all. And we're going to see what impact that has. Um, Dylan, didn't you want to bring me a water also? Um, but anyways, um, since AWS Lambda is like the intuitive part, uh, I had a look at that. And uh, the languages that AWS Lambda is supporting right now is Java, Node.js, Python, and C Sharp. And right when I uh, bought Alexa and the device and played around with it, I wanted to find out how to implement stuff for that myself, right? And um, when I saw that, and I uh, read the documentation and realized everything is web service based. I was wondering why am I not able to use D for that? And um, 
actually what I remembered then was someone on the uh, forums actually posting how to host uh, deep applications in, La in Lambda. And that was kind of the kicker. And um, what, what this script is actually doing is uh, it allows us to host a D application in a Node.js based Lambda. So you have a Node.js wrapper around it that is doing nothing but uh, converting the parameters in a way that you can pass it to the D application inside the Lambda. Um, this is reduced to, to, to also fit it to the screen, but it's, uh, that is essentially it. Um, so once that was done, I was able to use D for my skill. So um, what kind of advantages does it have to use D here? First of all, it's super easy. It's type safe. Every, I, I don't have to tell you what kind of advantages it is to, have to use D over Node.js, for example, which is like the most prominent uh, language to use for skills. So this is kind of the most basic uh, skill that you can come up with. And um, it's doing nothing but uh, um, defining that there is this uh, language file that I'm going to talk about later, the Alexa text en, and uh, to register one intent that this skill is supporting. And this is the about intent. Um, this is the most simple uh, response you can uh, define in a skill. And um, it does nothing but inherit from the base intent class and returning an Alexa result object. That you, uh, the, the, the two only fields that you have to set is what kind of response are you defining there, and then what content it has. And in this case, you can see um, the, the speech, uh, the output speech is defined in this SSML, mar uh, this speech uh, markup language, actually. And the cool thing about that is that you can uh, use uh, markup uh, in there to define how to pronounce certain things, but this is uh, going to be too much for today. Um, so now comes the most complicated part. Let's try to, to use the bio intent. Alexa, ask deconf17, who is Walter Bright? Deconference 2017 speaker bio of Martha Ride. Not found. Please try again with the correct speaker name. You can find out about a list of speakers by asking for the schedule of day one. Okay, I'm going to need your perfect English pronunciation. Alexa, who do you like more, you, Stefan you or Dylan? <laughs> <laughs> we try that later. Alexa, please ask DCOMP17, who is Walter Bright? I like live demos. D conference 2017 speaker bio of Walter Bright. Walter Bright is the creator of D and first implementer of the D programming language and has implemented compilers for several other languages. He's an expert in all areas of compiler technology, including front ends, optimizers, code generation, interpreter engines, and runtime libraries. Walter regularly writes articles about compilers and programming, is known for engaging and informative presentations, and provides training in compiler development techniques. Many are surprised to discover that Walter is also the creator of the Wargame Empire, which is still popular today over 30 years after its debut. Do you want to know what he talks about? The truth is that I stay up all night practicing how to say Walter's full name. <laughs> Next is Andre. <laughs> so yeah, you saw he, she's kind of talky, right? Uh, but actually, I, all, all put, uh, I got that information from the deconference page. So um, uh, this is basically the data that this skill is based on. Um, so yeah, the, one of the most important features of D that, that are used in that, uh, uh, that skill kit, like the SDK of uh, Alexa skills, are the metaprogramming features. And uh, localization uh, is one of the most important aspects in skills, because you want to have a skill that is supporting all the markets, right? And the problem is, since it's so, so essentially based on language, uh, you have to provide different um, uh, localizations of, of everything. And um, the, uh, the way how that is implemented in JavaScript is kind of uh, horrible. And um, I wanted to have a decent system there. So I gone, um, since I'm kind of used to that topic from our games uh, anyways, uh, I wanted to have a system where I can look up a string by using an ID. And in best case scenario, it needs to be performant, right? So it's just an, uh, a lookup into a lookup table without any hashing and stuff. So uh, 
what I did was creating a language file that looks like this. It's like a CSV. And um, I'm using that to look up uh, the strings without caring what kind of language the user came from. So in my code, I'm using that in this way. There's an enum defining the different uh, sentence or the different uh, strings I want to look up. And uh, as you can see in that unit test, um, I'm not caring about wh where the, the language is set. I'm just expecting the, the right string to return. But how does that work? Um, there's this local parser that is taking care of everything. And uh, I actually tried to fit the whole implementation on the screen again, but I didn't manage. The main features that are, though, used in here is the import to, uh, from, a, from a file uh, to a string. So I'm going to be in importing the whole CSV file. And then I'm going to go over all the members of the enum and try to find those parts in the CSV file, and then setting that into an, uh, into an contiguous uh, array. And that is all code generated and then mixed in. And uh, the cool thing about the, the metaprogramming features of D is actually I'm not an expert in that, and I never was able to do anything sane with that in C++, but D actually makes me believe I can do metaprogramming. <laughs> And if you want to see the full implementation, it's, it's all on GitHub. Um, another important aspect is uh, how to define what kind of intents are bound to what kind of uh, uh, class to, to implement the logic behind the intents. And there's two ways. Uh, there's the, the way that we saw already, where you implement uh, a, a, an intent class inheriting from the base intent. But there's also a method annotation version. And I'm going to show you both implementations, because it's kind of cool. The intent class needs to be called the same way as the intent schema defines that intent name. So what I'm doing here is, in the base class of the intent, I'm going to find out the class's name, and it needs to match. But uh, sometimes it's, it has so horrible names, especially in our example with the built-in uh, intents, that I cannot make a class called like that. So what I can do is I can um, annotate my function in the skill with what kind of intent it needs to correlate to. And uh, in this case, it's the Amazon built-in yes intent, which is uh, something that we're going to see in a bit, because the skill that I just presented uh, where I asked for Walter's biography, it is, in the end, it asked me for if I wanted to know about the talk he's uh, talking about, right? And this is um, the conversation mode that I mentioned. So the skill asks something back, and now I'm supposed to answer with yes or no, right? And this is uh, the intent that's going to be triggered then. So what I'm expecting is that the speaker name is still defined in the, in the session attributes so that I know what kind of speaker we are still talking about. And the implementation behind that is when an intent arrives, um, I'm going to go through the whole skill class and find out about uh, each method, if it's annotated, if it has the right uh, user-defined attribute, and what kind of string uh, is defined in there for the intent name. Um, Stefan, yeah? may I quickly interject with some comments from the chat? Sure. One of them was a uh, bug report that uh, she answered incorrectly. The question, uh, who is Walter Bright? The answer is, my homeboy. That's <laughs> <laughs> what Mio said, so you might want to... Mio, Damn, could you yeah. do a PR? That needs to be fixed on the deconf page then, though. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Maybe, maybe it should just be like Walking Dead. <gasps> oh, no, we've gone across a copyright issue. Well, anyways, and everybody is my homeboy. <laughs> I guess nobody got that reference. Um, the other uh, question here was, how do you stop Alexa? You mean while she's talking? Yeah. You can always uh, tell her to stop, actually. Oh, <laughs> fantastic. And, and the other abort. question was, um, have you tested how she handles uh, Razvans? Um, <laughs> I guess the guy knows the answer. <laughs> no, I didn't. Um, actually, it's, it's, uh, right now, it's only a subset of the speakers, to be fair. But I'm, uh, I'm in, I intend to publish that skill as open source on GitHub. So yeah, let's uh, answer Alexa's request about... Um, if it, yeah, it's still expecting my answer, right? So let's hope that she at least understands my yes. Alexa, yes. Damn it. OK, now is the problem I need to start over. So maybe I'm going to need you again. <laughs> Alexa, ask Decon 17, who is Walter Bright? Oh, no, we have to listen to all that again. Well, now you can show us, Alexa, stop. 
Actually not. <laughs> D-Conference 2017 speaker bio of Walter Bright. Walter Bright is the creator of D and first implementer of the D programming language and has implemented compilers for several other languages. He's an expert in all areas of compiler technology, including so front ends, that. optimizers, code generation, interpreter engines and runtime libraries. Walter regularly writes articles about compilers Walter, and programming, yourself? is known for engaging and informative presentations, and provides training in compiler development techniques. Many are surprised to discover that Walter is also the creator of the Wargame Empire, which is still popular today over 30 years after its debut. Do you want to know what he talks about? Okay, let's try. Alexa, yes. The talk. Pointers gone wild. Memory safety and D. Bye. Walter Bright. Starts on day one at 10-0. The talk is about. While memory safe code can be written in any language, it has become increasingly obvious that languages need to be able to mechanically check memory safety. Errors in memory safety are regularly exploited to breach security, and is all too commonplace in code that was thought to be secure. Relying on best practices and code reviews simply isn't good enough anymore. This presentation is about D's approach to mechanically checking for memory safety in a language with pointers. Great, that works. Um, now we can go back to full screen, I guess. We did get another comment from the chat saying, you're triggering people's Alexas at home, and could you please stop it? <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they should have renamed the, the keyword there. Some people call, her, uh, call their Alexa computer like in Star Trek. Um, OK. Well, actually, there is a one part is missing. What the hell? So yeah, uh, one problem that I wanted to talk about is uh, in the example that we just saw, and actually my pronunciation was the perfect way to, to show, show that problem, is that language is hard to do. Um, so what, what you see in this example snippet is the JSON object that uh, uh, Alexa is giving me for the request, some similar request I did before. And for some reason, um, I don't know if someone uh, catches the mistake in there, but uh, <laughs> it's an I don't know. Of Walter's privacy. I, <laughs> I don't know what my, what's wrong with my English, but that's what Alexa understood. And uh, the obvious problem is that if you want to look that up into a database, it's not going to work. But the, the cool thing about D is that there is something that's pretty, uh, making it pretty simple to solve that. And that's actually an algorithm that I almost never used before, but it's a first-class citizen in Phobos, and it's something very important in Alexa skills, because as soon as you have to match strings that were spoken before, you have problems that they are deferring in the way that you expect them, and in the way that, are, that they are actually understood by Alexa. And the Levenstein distance uh, algorithm basically gives me the, uh, like an heuristic, how, what kind of difference there is between two strings. And um, obviously, in the first example, the difference was too big so between the, the possible uh, speakers and the string that was understood. But usually, that works pretty fine. And, uh, the, the reason for that, uh, that it didn't understand anything before was that there is a certain, uh, sh certain threshold that you need to adhere to. Walter? Are you going to ask to be stopped using as examples in talks? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here I'm being humiliated. Uh, <laughs> but anyhow, there's another algorithm in std.string called soundex which solves that problem a another way. OK. And it's uh, much more general, and it can handle much wider variations in uh, spelling differences. OK. So I kind of su suggest, just for fun, to give that a try. I should definitely do that. For future improvements with that. Cool. Yeah, I didn't know that. Perfect. Um, but I guess it's also giving me like a heuristic between two strings, right? Uh, like a value, or is it just? Uh, so what Soundex algorithm does is breaks down um, text into sounds. Mm -hmm. And then the sounds are compared. 
for what's the closest sound to something. Ah. And it's made to be, and it's designed to be very fuzzy. That sounds perfect. I should have used that, then we wouldn't have to wait for that long before. <laughs> You're redeeming yourself, Walter. Thanks, Walter. I will definitely try that. Um, but anyhow, one of the biggest features that's almost o way too, too easy to oversee uh, in this case is unit tests, built-in first-class uh, first so first citizens unit test in the D language, because uh, what turns out to be a v a a very funny uh, gets old very soon, as soon as you have to debug stuff in those skills and actually have to talk to that interface all the time. So what you end up doing is you will pretty soon uh, create your, uh, your um, speech ex examples in, in a way that you can make the skill be triggered by unit tests and make sure that those algorithms like the Levenstein distance is actually hidden in that find speaker method to, to try to make that uh, as, as easy as possible because uploading the stuff always into Lambda and uh, triggering uh, Alexa by talking to it is actually a very long process and uh, leads to long turnaround times. So the unit tests are one of the, after the meta programming, one of the biggest features in D that's uh, simplifying the implementation of skills. So yeah, the, in summary, the type safety um, that you don't have in Node.js, the performance that D provides, and uh, the whole ecosystem that gets uh, available through VibeD. And since we are talking about web services, this is an important thing here, uh, because uh, I want to ask the dconf page for the information, right? So I need to, like, a way to easily do that. And um, the metaprogramming that I showed you already before. Are there disadvantages to using D? Uh, yes, unfortunately. And the biggest one is the one that I already showed you. The way to, to trigger the application from Node.js, it's working, but it's not performant. Because um, if, uh, if you compare that, for example, to a, to a skill written in Java, or even the Node.js skills, that's horribly so. Uh, like the average uh, return time uh, for, this, for the skill responses is around one second, which sounds not much. But as soon as you talk a lot to Alexa, that's, that's uh, a noticeable difference to the native implementations. Um, and the, the most important problem is once you have a skill that you provide in the store and everyone can download it and use it, it's going to be an issue for you because you have to pay for that as well. And Lambda, uh, it's easy uh, in the beginning, and it has a free tier of stuff that you can do for, for uh, free. But as soon as you have a lot of traffic on it, it's going to be expensive. And the problem is they uh, pay you for the time that you actually use the, the service. So as uh, the slower your skill is, the more you pay. And um, obviously, like every time uh, I'm doing something in D, I have to bind APIs that are not implemented in D yet. But the advantage for everyone else is you don't have to do that anymore because I did it already. So um, one thing like DynamoDB, like uh, uh, this uh, document-based uh, database in, uh, that's also pretty easy to use if you are already in AWS, that's something that we use there as well because there's also a lot of free uh, tiers for DynamoDB to, to put your data into. But still, I, uh, I managed to find a business case where D is a, a, a good choice for implementing skills. And uh, I asked myself, OK, what kind of cost does Lambda uh, have or break down into one invocation? And I, for that, I used a Hello World skill written in Java as a comparison. And in the beginning, I was like happy like a child because I thought I won, because the first invocation of the Java skill took around one and a half seconds. And I thought, yes. I don't have to do anything. It's, it's super slow, and D is uh, performing better than that. But the problem was that was the first time. So the JVM had to be booted up, and then it was hot, and the second time it just took three milliseconds. So damn it. Um, but the good thing is, as I mentioned, you can also host your skills uh, on your own machine. And uh, in that case, uh, I, I decided to try um, a run on the EC2 instances. And those are paid by the hour. So what I wanted to do was uh, to find out how many Lambda invocations I can do until I reach the price of the EC2 instance. So that's basically the sweet spot where uh, the EC2 uh, D skill gets, gets a better use case than using Lambda for that. And now there are some numbers. And uh, you can uh, hit me later if, if you find an error in there. But the, the thing is that uh, you can uh, come up with uh, er, that price. I don't tr even try to pronounce what kind of cent that is. But um, 
the, the price breaks down to that amount if you, if you uh, consider this Hello World skill written in Java. And uh, this breaks down to a price per request that is even harder to, to tell you. But the thing is, I wanted to find out how many of those requests do fit into a C4 EC2 instance that costs you 11 cents per hour. And that's actually around a half a million requests. And that's where I get, got the feeling that we have a business case here, because um, that only means 146 requests per second. And I thought that should be doable with WIPE-D, right? So I implemented the same Hello World skill in, in WIPE-D, and I booted it up, and I used Apache uh, Bench to, to find out how many requests we can actually do on there. And it turns out even on, my, on the crappiest internet connection that I had, I, I could do uh, 3,000 requests per second. So what, where does that leave us? Um, I think D has a pretty good potential to be used for, uh, for those skills, uh, because you can still use Lambda in the easy way in the beginning. And uh, once you have success, you should definitely think about moving your skill to, to a decent hosting platform, if that's EC2 or anything else that doesn't matter at, uh, that much. But the thing is that once you reach that point, it's still uh, valuable to, to have D because uh, the cost efficiency is, is uh, still better than keeping, keep on using Lambda for that. What needs to be done in the future? Um, or well, actually, what potential lies in there? Uh, first of all, um, the voice service behind all the Alexa stuff, that's, uh, that's completely generic. You can trigger that from your own APIs, so you don't need those Amazon devices to do that. And that's where I expect uh, that you can talk to D, actually, from all sorts of Internet of Things app, uh, devices in the near future, because I expect this uh, AVS support in my next television, in my next car, because once I had that device, I missed it everywhere where I didn't have it, like, on, like in the car or on the toilet. And, uh, and um, well, there's one slight hope is to, to get native D support in AWS Lambda. Um, I wouldn't hold my breath for that, but I, I still think it makes sense because it doesn't need to be specific D support. It just needs to be a generic binary support. But whatever. Uh, if you want to see what kind of potential in that technology is, I suggest to look at the, or watch the movie Her with Scarlett Johansson, so um, it gives you like a totally crazy idea of the future where you can talk to your PC about everything. And uh, I didn't believe about any of that before I actually bought the Alexa device and found out that this future is not that far away anymore. But what needs to be done from uh, Amazon's side? First of all, it needs to start recognizing voices, because uh, by default, you can make Alexa uh, allow to order stuff on Amazon for you. And the problem is it cannot differentiate between you, your wife, your children. So once you uh, end up having this huge teddy bear in your, uh, brought to your home, you see that this is a feature that's necessary at some point. And it's not a functionality that's not possible, right? Because other systems like Motorola's Trusted Voice can do that as well. And uh, one other important aspect is because I had this fantasy of coming up uh, with a skill that gives you the ability, because I, like, I'm a gamer, right? So my idea was to make this interactive novel that you can talk to and uh, like an adventure where you tell Alexa what to do and stuff. Uh, but the problem with that is uh, you heard her voice, right? It's always this computer voice. And you, uh, the SSML language allows you to define pitches and, and uh, the way how something needs to be pronounced, but there's not a lot of functionality that's actually supported by Alexa right now. So there's a lot of stuff to improve. And the, improv the approval process itself, it's uh, coming from the app development sphere anyway. I know this is a, a complicated thing, but actually uh, Amazon managed to make it even harder than to, to uh, provide an app for iOS. It's, it takes us already two months to get our skill uh, put into the store. And that's uh, also because the support for the German skill store is even, even worse. <clears throat> so what's the conclusion? I think Dlang is a perfect fit for skills. And one of the biggest reasons for that is it's a, it's a pioneer market. It's all web-based, and there's, no, there's not at all that much technology to, that you need to rely on. And so there's not a good reason to say, yeah, you can only do that with C or Python or Java or, or all that stuff, because there's not a lot of SDKs you need to implement or that you need to uh, focus on. It's, it's a very new market, and um, all the functionality that you need is in Dlang uh, with Wipe. Um, 
The only problem is the, the scaling up right now, the, which I already showed you how to actually circumvent. So obviously, all of that is on GitHub. So the whole the SDK that, that was developed in, in that whole process is on, on GitHub, and I uh, suggest you have a look at it. Those are the useful links for that. And that's it. Thank you. So before we go to questions in the theater, I just want to catch us up on the chat. Um, QZNC asked, has Alexa ever successfully understood Alexandrescu? <laughs> Actually, yes. <laughs> we wow. can try that if, if you guys want to. So Alexa already has one up on me. No? Nobody got that joke? All right. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of inappropriate requests for things that you should ask Alexa, which we're going to skip past. <laughs> uh, but Stanislav uh, requests that you ask Alexa who Alexa is so she can suddenly achieve uh, sentience and then go on to conquer the world. I'm going to suggest we don't do that. <laughs> Have you done that, though? No, there's a lot of stuff you can try, like uh, self-destruction, which actually there's a lot of stuff that works. <laughs> And the one last uh, chat-related thing uh, is that Q, uh, ZNC has said uh, that they are off for the day and goodbye to everyone. So maybe we could just get a, a group farewell to QZNC from the theater. Bye. Make them feel like they're here. Any questions from the audience here? Stefan, have you um, explored notifications? There's, there's no official notification API right now, but um, I think people have got them working via some hack. I didn't know that that's possible with a hack yet. So you, you can have an alert for a server or something or some condition and trigger it to start talking out the blue if you want. OK, yeah, I didn't know that. Actually, I'm not quite sure if I want notifications on that thing, and, uh, because those notifications on my phone already annoy the hell out of me, right? So if Alexa is all the time blinking and wants to tell me something, I don't know if that's really what I want. <laughs> Any other questions for Stefan? Do you have to publish a new skill for translated skills, or can you publish one skill that can handle all the languages? Um, well, actually, you can. Uh, you have from the from the development portal perspective, you have to create a, a, like a new skill, but it's uh, it's just a, a new language. You can rely on the same uh, implementation so that it goes as I showed you to my same skill, but using a different language file. Um, but uh, I don't actually know how the approval process looks for that, if I have to go through the whole approval process again, because right now I'm having issues just to get the German one uh, allowed. So I didn't bother to try both languages yet. I don't know what happens then. But the cool thing is, I mean, uh, that's also a good reason why they take their time for that. You can update lambdas and all that stuff on the fly all the time after you once published it, right? That's one reason why many skills are fucked up right now, because you can just patch them to death and uh, they don't work anymore. Uh, but you have also the opportunity to change them and not go through the whole approval process anymore. I hope that answered your question. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? Well, thank you again, Stefan. <laughs> we'll go to another break, and we are actually doing great on time. We'll start again at 4.30 for two back-to-back -back talks from the master's students that are also part of Andre's uh, mentorship program. And after that, we'll end the day with lightning talks. So see you back in a couple minutes, everybody.